Eric here, and welcome to today's true mystery story. Today's story brings us to Huntsville, Alabama in 1992, when a woman named Betty Wilson comes home from her AA meeting. She comes home and she goes into her house, and when she walks in, she finds her husband, Jack Wilson, lying dead on the floor in a pool of blood. She freaks out. She runs to the neighbors, she calls 911. The police come, and when they come, they find Jack lying on the floor. Next to him, there's a baseball bat. They see that he was bludgeoned with a baseball bat, but that he had also been stabbed, although there was no knife at the scene. They also discover that the phone lines had been cut in the house. There was also a ski mask found in his bedroom. And there really was nothing missing, like there was no uh, apparent robbery. The only evidence of robbery was that uh, his wallet was found on the ground and there was no money in it. His credit cards were still in it, but there was just no cash in it. And that was the only evidence that there was any kind of robbery. Jack was a local ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, and he had been married to Betty for like 14 years. He was well liked and well, well respected in the community. He did some work that people couldn't afford the work, he you know, did some for free, whatnot. He was a really decent guy. He had three kids, so did Betty from a previous marriage, and everything seemed quite normal. And there really wasn't any evidence whatsoever, no, no clues to go on in this case. There was only one clue, and that was the day before, a police informant had told police in another city that somebody from that other city was supposed to go to Huntsville to kill a doctor. That was the only lead they had. So they took Jack's body to Birmingham for the autopsy. There, a Dr. Uh, Embry did the autopsy. And okay, so during the autopsy, there was they had found that there was several la lacerations on Jack's head. His skull was also fractured. He also had his uh, um, hyroid bone broken in his neck and his shoulder was fractured and he had a puncture wound on his shoulder and he also had fractured arms which were clearly defensive wounds that he's trying to fight off of his, his attacker. He also had two stab wounds in the abdomen. And they also checked the bat for evidence and tested the blood on the bat and saw that it was in fact the same type as Jack's blood found on the bat. So enter into the story, James White. James White was the man that the informant was talking about that had overheard that he was contracted to kill somebody. James White lived in Vincent, Alabama, which was about 100 miles away from Huntsville. There he lived in a trailer by himself. He was a, uh, a handyman at a local uh, Vincent Elementary School. He was not a good guy. He had a criminal history. He was an extreme user of drugs and alcohol and not really regarded as a stand-up guy. He even got a dishonorable discharge from the U.S. military. But but, as a coincidence, the school where he worked also worked Peggy Lowe. And Peggy Lowe was Betty Wilson's twin sister. Peggy was a first grade teacher at Vincent Elementary School, the same school where James White worked. So, James is on like a four-day bender. The police pick him up and they interrogate him. And this is where I think it's there's a little bit of question to his uh, story and interrogation because he was on a four-day bender and the police were trying to wrap stuff up. But you know what? Let's just give this the benefit of the doubt for the moment. So in the interrogation, uh, White admits to being inside the Wilson home the night of the murder. So the police do a search of his home, and when they search his home, they find shoes with blood on them and the blood was the same type as Jack Wilson's. They find 
uh, a book, a library book in his truck, and the library book had been checked out by Betty Wilson, and also there was a handgun in the, the on the property and the handgun was the gun was registered to betty wilson so white was arrested and charged with jack wilson's murder and while being interrogated jack white says that he was hired by betty wilson and peggy lowe the sisters to kill jack wilson and that he was offered five thousand dollars to kill him. Well, of course, this sparked an immediate investigation into the sisters. It turns out that Jack and Betty had a really unconventional marriage. Uh, they had separate lives, they had separate bedrooms, and Betty even admitted to having several affairs. It turns out that Jack had Crohn's disease and Crow. Uh, Jack had an ostomy bag, and Betty found that repulsive, she said. And so their sex life was even non-existent. So, although it seems strange, the police really didn't have any evidence pointing towards the sisters. However, for some reason, they were both charged based on James White's testimony and apparently James White had made a, a deal with the police and he decided to give police testimony uh, in, in lieu of a diminished sentence. So the police take this testimony of this bad guy and they use that to, to charge the women with murder. So both women were charged with murder and they were both given separate um, trials. So in the trial, it comes out that Jack Wilson, apparently on the night of his murder, had left work, went home. When he got home, he had a sign from a local uh, political campaign or something that he went to the to this to this garage, grabbed a baseball bat, hammered in the political sign in his front lawn. Then went into the house. The neighbors saw him do this. The neighbors saw him with the baseball bat. White said that at that point he was already in the house. And in some sort of moment of clarity, he decided that he didn't want to kill Jack at that point. He just wanted to leave. And in an attempt to flee, he was confronted by Jack and there was a struggle. And in that struggle, he bludgeoned Jack to death with the bat and then stabbed him a couple times and then took off, he fleed the house. And here's the interesting part is he said that when he fled the house, that outside waiting for him was Betty Wilson in her car and she gave James White a ride back to his truck and then he took off from there. However, when investigators um, analyzed her car, there was no evidence whatsoever, there was no blood stains, there was no hair, there was no fibers, there was no fingerprints, there was no nothing to support James White's story. And unbelievable, just with this crappy guy's testimony, that may or may not have been coerced, I don't know, that uh, with very little evidence, other than the fact that they portrayed Betty uh, as an adulterer, they ended up convicting her of murdering her husband, Jack Wilson. And she was sentenced to life in prison. Well, about eight months after Jack's murder, the trial starts for Peggy Lowe. Peggy Lowe is also charged with the same charges her sister murder. She's facing a trial now that her sister just lost but here's the major difference. There's several differences in the trials, but the major difference is that without really much evidence against uh, Betty, her character was in question. And when it came to her sister Peggy now, who was on trial, is that her character was flawless. She was a first grade teacher. She was married. 
She had, uh, she was in the church choir. Like she had a really good reputation. So the prosecution couldn't use that. And that was the only thing that they had used to convict Betty of this crime. So they had to rely, the prosecution really had to rely on James White's testimony. But we knew that James White's testimony was not so great. So this time around, the prosecutors knew that they had to come up with some real evidence against Peggy. They're going to have to do much better than they did with Betty. And um, the defense also knew that now that they had the experience from Betty's trial, they had the information from Betty's trial, they saw how it worked, and they knew now that it was going to be evidence that was really going to be necessary for the prosecution. So they really focused on the evidence themselves as well. So with the information they had from the first trial, they had also noticed as well that James White never admitted to killing Jack Wilson. And so the defense, they end up looking more into the evidence and they called in a forensic pathologist from Atlanta named uh, Chris, Dr. Chris Sperry. And Sperry came in and he said, first of all, they're, they're, the evidence of the crime scene doesn't really match with the, uh, the original autopsy because there was no blood splatter. And if somebody had been beating there, beaten there with a baseball bat, that there would have been blood splatter from the impact of the baseball bat as well as swinging of the baseball bat. And he also said that on the bat itself, that there was no tissue and there was no hair, that even the condition of the bat really wasn't consistent with it being used as the murder weapon. And Dr. Sperry also concluded that he didn't even think that the bat was used as the murder weapon. He concluded that it was some other weapon. He thinks that it was a fire poker because of the, the injuries on the head that the, a baseball bat would have crushed the skull, whereas there was only a fracture on the skull. And he said it probably wasn't a bat, more than likely it was a fire poker. And that the puncture wound on Jack's shoulder was consistent with the, the poker of the fire poker, that that's what, what probably punctured his shoulder was the fire poker. And that he also said that it could have actually also been Jack was strangled to death because the, his high old bone was broken. Uh, there was really a lot to, for this doctor to go on. And apparently it was the original guy who did the original autopsy really did a good job. It's just that he didn't look at pictures of the crime scene. So he didn't actually have crime scene evidence to come to his conclusions where the next doctor did. And he had all the evidence from the first trial. He said that the evidence really didn't match with the you know the same stuff that that they used in the first trial that it really wasn't i don't know good science i don't know and that he said the story that james white told was not consistent with the evidence and that peggy's story was really so much more different than betty's story and he pretty much concluded that james white testimony was lies. Well, it turns out that the jury pretty much felt the same way and that on, after only two hours of deliberating, the jury come back with a decision to acquit, acquit uh, Peggy of the crime of murder. And once she was acquitted, shortly thereafter, James White actually recanted his original testimony. It's strange that there were nearly two identical trials for the same crime, yet two totally different outcomes and Betty was guilty and Peggy was innocent. And surprisingly enough, Betty appealed her decision after that and lost her appeal and is still to this day in prison. So this story, I really don't know. I, I haven't really come to a, a real conclusion on this one. I, I agree that James White was a bad man. He was in the house for some reason that night. And I believe that somehow the sisters were involved. That part is just too coincidental to me. I don't know, what do you think? Give me some comments. And uh, if you like today's story, as always, go to my website and you can watch more stories at mystery.fan. And until next time, don't be a criminal or a victim. Thanks for watching.